Okay, this is a video about making uh, a sculpting video. And the question I received was, well, you know, if we have a DSCR target, and we also have a leverage or gearing target, is there a way to program this so we can take either of the targets? And I used to think the answer to that question was you could certainly do it, but it would be a messy circular reference problem. And I think, so I laid in bed, of course, thinking about sculpting and circular references. What else would you think about at night? And um, I think we can do it without. So what we're going to do, here's our, our cash flow, F11. So like a little, just a growth in our cash flow. And now I think I have the generic macros open, so I press Shift Control C to color the to color these. So we can try different growth rates and different uh, capital expenditures to get different, uh, you know, uh, project IRRs. Okay, and if the project IRR is really high, then it really won't, the sculpting will get us such a high level of debt that the uh, leverage constraint will always come into play. But if the project IRR is fairly low here, not much higher than the interest rate, then the uh, then it's going to be the sculpting that uh, uh, the DSCR I think that really drives the cash flow. And mo most importantly, what you really want to do is 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 do some kind of goal seek on this. So when you change this number, this initial number, that could be our tariff, you know, sometimes it's going to be the DSCR target, and sometimes it's going to be the leverage target. So um, what we're going to do in, in the initial part here is do this without taxes, which of course is cheating by a very uh, major kind of way. And then we're going to in introduce taxes, which causes a circular reference and makes life hell in a way. I didn't mean to criticize taxes, I'm just saying from a programming perspective. So, uh, uh, you know, if, if we, um, uh, okay, I, I put a uh, tenor here of 15, so we have a repayment period. We could almost just do this here. If we put the uh, target DSCR, that's kind of cheap. We can just take this operating cash flow, divide it by the... Uh, debt service coverage and multiply that by the true or false. Here's our, and then shift control R, so this is our number. And you know, if we have a constant discount rate, then we can just put NPV of the uh, discount rate and just get the uh, value of the debt. So I have to go for a minute. I'm pausing the video just for a minute. So. Oh, so I can't remember exactly where we were, but we, uh, and I'm, am I, I think I'm recording. Am I? I, I am. Okay. And, uh, so we have a different way to get the, uh, the, uh, total amount of the debt. And in this case, since the debt service uh, coverage ratio would give you a lower number, um, that we pick this, and if we made the uh, IR higher, let's make it 150 or something, that's very high. Oh, it's still the debt service coverage constraint, interestingly, is still in place. Uh, well, I guess if we made the uh, length of the debt 20, then our leverage constraint is in place. Okay, so we might want to, and I had a wonderful suggestion on this, that can, how can you make this automatic so you could uh, shift control plus and uh, shift spacebar and shift control plus, excuse me, and uh, 
leverage. Well, how about debt selected? And we take simply the minimum of these two. Okay. And uh, so, again, this is the minimum is the debt service constraint. But if we would put 20 years, the minimum becomes the leverage constraint. And can we do this automatically now? Of course, if there's a... a, a, a there's a circular reference with the leverage, the, the, the sculpting itself, which there is with taxes. We, we, need, we need to resolve that circular reference. And this is, I hope, I hope, I hope you can see that using a function to resolve this, instead of having to put copy paste here, copy paste here, and then do this and copy paste over and over and over again, it's essential to be able to do this with a function. So we'll, we'll, um, We'll evaluate this uh, uh, as we go. Okay, I think I'm back, and this has been a <coughs> very often interrupted uh, approach here. Now, when we uh, do this, uh, I'm going to do it two ways. First, I'm going to make a, a DSCR target. A balance, and then we'll also make a uh, uh, and then and then we'll also make um, a maximum leverage balance. Uh, now. Uh, we we might be able to uh, and maybe you can see this better than I can uh, be able to use either method uh, I think um, I think we'll probably I, I, I suspect that, that we might have to keep them separate so because our balance is different so we have this balance, and you know we we need a interest rate here, so we'll need an interest on both of these. Um, now uh, I'm going to make the opening balance equal the closing balance, and I'm going to make our uh, yeah, interest be the the opening balance multiplied by our um, interest rate. That's not a very big shock, any of this, I hope. And so once we have this interest rate, this is why I have a suspicion that we it would be kind of difficult to do these all in one go without doing them. Um, this will be just this minus this, okay? And did I do this right? This was yes. Okay, it's this is just the repayment. <coughs> Debt service is interest plus principal. So repayment is debt service minus interest. And then if we do this one, we just have a closing balance. And on our closing balance equals our opening balance. Our interest is our opening balance multiplied by the interest rate. And now <coughs> when we do uh, this one, I think we can, uh, we'll put a target debt service Oops. Maybe one more. Target debt service with with LLCR. This is kind of I call it the LLCR trick. If we take the um, the LLCR, that's the CFADS over the loan life. So if we take the NPV. And of course, if you had a changing interest rate, you'd have to do this on a little more elaborate basis. And then if you take the, L, the uh, this one, and then let's multiply it by the um, uh, true and false. Now, some people, I've met somebody recently who said, ah, I hate that shit. But if you press Shift, Control, Enter, we get our number. 
and then we divide that by the leverage debt. And now if you press enter, it doesn't work. F2, shift control enter, you get the LLCR that would make this one work now. Why in the hell did this not uh, did I did I uh, multiply this by the <clears throat> this is the I uh, why is this LCR different than this one? I'm gonna have to hang on. Shit. My mistake was that I uh, used the debt service, the target debt service. Ha ha ha, not very funny. The debt target debt service down here rather than the CFABS. Pretty stupid. So then our target debt service is, again, this one, F4, divided by this one. Not F4, this one. Okay, shift control one, and the repayment will be this minus the interest, just like we did before. And the difference is our number. And then we press shift control R, and now, um, oops, oh shoot, okay, well that's not bad, uh, is it, is it, just a minute. This 975, uh, it shouldn't have, uh, it should have just gone down to zero here. And uh, this uh, target debt service with LLCR, of course, I made a mistake. And we, mul we should multiply that one by the um, true and false switch. Okay, and then uh, now we can put repayment applied, and I suppose we can uh, do something like this. You know, if uh, shoot, let's let's insert another column, and we'll say, you know, if this equals this, then it's false, and we can put not this one so we can see well if it's if this uh, up here is is uh, if it's the maximum debt leverage then we'll take the uh, repayment from here otherwise we'll take the repayment from here and now we have the uh, repayment and the uh, amount of debt uh, ready to go and if we and that's the one we'll apply in our model and if we change something like make this 5% oops 1% of that and make the um, cost 1,400 okay now the uh, leverage constraint is in place. Not, I mean, the DSCR rather constraint is in place. We have this. If we change our uh, uh, debt tenor to uh, 15, uh, now the it's still this. Let's change it to 25. Now, which one is in place? Oops, 30. Can I go 30? I can't go 30. Uh, uh, 20. Okay, the DSCR. Yeah, whatever. You see that? Okay. So that's, I think that's a interesting little exercise. Now the problem with all this is what happens when we have a circular reference driven by either taxes or by the interest income on DSCR. Since the interest income on DSCR is such a big one, I think we'll start with that one. So uh, I'm going to... Uh, I'll stop this video now.